You're watching the Motorola Edge 20 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. This phone also comes with the option of getting a vegan leather back. So on this back plate, there's a graphene pad over here. There are 14 Phillips screws as well as two T4 screws or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top cover. The glass camera lens covers are held down with adhesive and if you needed to replace them, you could just heat them up and pry them off. The NFC antenna lines are running along the center of this plastic piece and there are some antenna lines which are these light gray colored lines drawn on this plastic piece. So if you're having any issues with the antenna or NFC, make sure this plastic piece is screwed down properly since these lines which are drawn on this plastic piece help with the signal. On the back side is a flex cable for the secondary microphone and the dual LED flash. Now the graphene film needs to be peeled off. The purpose of the graphene film is to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two wire cables or coaxial cables located on the bottom right hand corner of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. Now the front facing camera cable can be disconnected and removed. The telephoto lens flex cable cannot be disconnected. Then there are four more Phillips screws which need to be removed. At this point, the main board can be lifted up and removed. This is the 8 megapixel telephoto lens and below it is the main 108 megapixel lens followed by the 16 megapixel ultra wide and macro vision lens. There's another microphone located on the top left corner and a liquid damage indicator or this white sticker over here on the bottom corner. There's also copper tape on these shields. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal pads on top of these chips. The other two connectors for the cameras are located on the back of the motherboard and those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located on the top corner and there's more copper tape on these shields as well as thermal paste over here and here. Once the copper tape is peeled back, there's some thermal paste on the processor and RAM as well as this chip over here and over here. Now the speaker assembly can be removed. There's some more graphene film on the speaker assembly. There are also a few more antenna lines. And here's the speaker itself underneath. The other two ends of the coaxial cables can be disconnected by popping them off. Now the flex cable connecting the main board to the subboard can be disconnected. At this point we can lift up and remove the subboard. The charger port is located down here and there's a liquid damage indicator which is this white sticker over here. On the back side, the primary microphone is located underneath this shield. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided, so we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some along the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry off. Here's a better look at the 4520 milliamp hour battery. First of all, prying this battery off was incredibly difficult. The adhesive underneath is extremely strong. 
Second of all, they advertise this battery as a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, but in reality, it's a 4,520 milliamp hour battery. I don't know why on the Edge 20 Pro they advertise it only as 4,500, but the version that's in China, which is pretty much the same phone, just rebranded as the Edge S Pro, is advertised at 4,520 milliamp hours. Here's a look at the other side. Now, once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable over here, which connects the main board to the sub board, as well as the SIM reader to the main board. We can also see the screen cable, which is routed right through the opening over here in the mid frame. So if you ever have to replace the screen, you'd have to take the back plate off, remove the screws on the top cover, as well as remove the cover itself, disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, remove the battery in order to gain access to the cable for the screen. And then you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening over here in the mid frame and just reassemble your phone. Moving on, we can see the copper heat pipe over here, which runs underneath the motherboard and the battery. The vibrator motor is located in the bottom corner of the phone and it's held down with adhesive. And the SIM reader over here is soldered onto this flex cable. So the flex cable and SIM reader would be replaced as one piece. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over here for the speaker opening and microphone. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader and volume keys is routed in between the frame and the screen. So if you wanted to replace those, you would also have to pry the screen off. The earpiece speaker is located on top and it's held down with adhesive. And there's a flex cable over here for the button on this side. And that's also routed through the mid frame. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.